Hi everyone, Helen Blunden here at Activate Learn on Twitter. It is time for another book review and my sincerest apologies. It has been a while since my last book review. It's been a few weeks simply because I have been reading some very hefty books that required me to really sit down and try and comprehend them. Now I'll give you a very quick rundown on what those books are. First one was Umberto Eco's Chronicles of a Liquid Society, which I'll do a review very soon on this. The second one, which I'm not really sure if I'll do a re review or not, was Mario Puzzo's The Family. I mistakenly thought that this was going to be a nice light-hearted read that would get me into the ready for reading the next one. I was psyching myself up to read The Black Swan by Nassim Nicholas Taleb. But what Mario Puzzo actually did to me was reading this was put my mind at complete distress reading about the Borgia family. But let's leave that aside and let's talk about this great book that I read by Taleb. Now this book was first published in 2007 and I've got the revised edition which was published in 2010 and I have bought, I've got his entire collection and this is the third book that I've read of his. Now the second revi revised book has a the last part which also includes his reflections and goes into the deeper I guess philosophies and reflections of what he wrote in the first part of the book. Now the book as I mentioned is called The Black Swan The Impact of the Highly Improbable. It's got rave reviews and I love how it's written which I'll actually talk about it uh, a bit later on but you're probably thinking well you know, shouldn't you define first what a black swan is? Well, by now you probably would have heard what a black swan event is. People out there who are traders, investors and so forth already know about the term. I wasn't aware of the term, although I, I knew what a black swan was simply because being an Australian, we've got these black swans everywhere. But, you know, it's actually surprising to others to understand that, well, you know, usually there are white swans out there. So the term black swan came about historically with people not believing that black swans existed. And in actual fact, in Australia, they're everywhere. So what is this book about? This book is about black swan events. Now, a black swan event is a highly improbable event, an event that you cannot predict, an event that when it happens, creates such a huge impact to people, to systems, to the world, basically changes the course of the world in some way. And afterwards, that's when you start, you're able to explain it, okay? They come up with theories as to why it could have happened. So these black swan events, they don't happen often, but what we're finding in, in this very uh, just complex world, they're happening more and more. And uh, he gleans that there are some reasons as to why this is happening through scalable business, globalization, and all sorts of stuff. He also talks about the fact that he doesn't take the approach of just because you think you know or you have a model to try and predict these things happening, the fact is you don't. And to be in a position where you are not knowing and not understanding puts you in a better position to understand and I guess shield yourself from the impact of black swans. Now what does this mean? I remember many years ago when I was in the military and I had to put through a group of cadets at the Australian Defence Force Academy some training and I talk about talked about the Yahari window and the Yahari window is something that you would have also seen it's a quadrant of four and it's knowing about I guess the impact of what you know and uh, what you don't know so in the four quadrants there are you know that there are no knowns there are things that we take as facts and what we know there are known unknowns there are things that we I guess don't know but we know that we don't know them there are unknown knowns and there are unknown unknowns and what Taylor does is he talks about the fact that we should be playing in the fourth quadrant and kind of know that we don't know. So our lack of understanding and our lack of knowledge should actually be seen as a good thing and not to be feared. Um, and I know many experts are probably scared about this because they say, well, look, we've spent 
our years, so many years studying. This is our experience. This is our work. You know, you can't turn around and say that I don't know my stuff. I think what Taylor be saying is kind of accept the fact that there are things that we just don't know and we don't know that we don't know them, if that makes sense. But knowing this also puts us in a position where we're able to, when these events do happen, we're in a better position to shield ourselves from the impact of those. So it's basically what you don't know is really more relevant to what you know. And this kind of logic is a bit twisted in some way, but it's also quite smart. Uh, because the more you read, I'm sure that there are heaps of people out there who the more they read, the more they try to understand, the more they talk to people, the more they try to understand what's happening in the world, they kind of realize, hell, we don't really know that much. And so that's a really good position to be because it means that you're open, you're curious, you can ask the questions, you can critique it. And you can understand that kind of like frameworks and models that scientists and economists have are just, are just that. Um, they're not meant to be, you know, in stone, in right. They're not, they're meant to be, I guess, guides for us to kind of ask the questions and critique and not kind of accept everything on face value. So the way that um, Taylor talks about the black swans, he is, he weaves a story and I, I kind of like the fact that he hasn't given us a, you know, the five top tips to how to overcome black swans because I detest that in a lot of ways. And in actual fact, it does mention it in the book with regards to it is not a book about where it's telling you and taking it right down to the nth, de nth degree and minimizing the information so that you could just get out there and get it done. I mean, after all, there are tons of non-fiction business books that are doing that already. But what he does is he weaves a story and he gets us to really sit and think about what is the meaning for this. Now, what I learned from this is a lot of investors and traders use this logic. Now, I don't come from a finance background, never have. And in fact, it actually scares me. But what I have been gleaning from this is the applications in my own work in the field of learning and development. And for a long time, the more I read, the more I try to understand, the more I realize I don't understand. But that's a good thing, according to him. Okay. The way he writes is actually quite brilliant. I have to laugh at it because he's got this kind of... Other people say that it's arrogant. Other people say that, you know, he kind of laughs at himself. He's got this self-deprecating manner. But also I love the fact that he just hangs shit on everyone else. I like that because at the same time, I don't think he's putting out that he's better than everyone else. He's just basically saying, think a little bit, ask questions, be open to new ideas, critique. And so I don't see that as a bad thing. So I love his writing. I love the fact that he's, he's making us be skeptical, not accept the bullshit that is given to us out there. And he presents, he presents information in a different way, in an inverted way to what many others are also presenting to us nowadays, online, in books, in, in business books, in, you know, entrepreneurial business books. And I love this. One of the things I had to smile about was he was trying to explain this concept of a black swan and he was sharing a story of Yevgenia's Krasovnovna's, I'm sorry if I didn't get that right, but there was this lady and she had this idea and she was an unpublished novelist who really wanted to express her ideas in this book, but no publisher would give her the time of day. And as I was reading this story, it just sucked me right in and I just thought, I really need to know who Yevgenia is. And here I was searching on Google and there was absolutely no mention of her. And I thought to myself, what's going on? What's, what's he doing? And then straight after the next chapter, he then talks about Yevgenia was just, it, it was a figment of his imagination. He was simply saying the story. But that's the kind of, kind of like, I had to smile as to how he did this because I kind of fell into this whole concept of what the Black Swan is about and how we automatically try and jump to um, some conclusions about who this person is and whether 
uh, they actually have something to, to help us out with. And in actual fact, he explained the black swan through the story quite well. The other things I do like is the concept of the barbell. To me, when I read, read about the barbell, I try to apply it into what I knew. Uh, now he talks about it in terms of investment, of being able to, if you've got your money, don't invest in some medium risk, um, I don't even know the right terms, don't invest in some medium risk ventures, invest in something, your bulk of your money in um, uh, very safe, very safe ventures and then put just a small component into the highly risk uh, risk ones so that if there isn't any that ha anything that happens you don't lose your entire fortune now look don't take any trading or investment advice from me because I come from a learning and development background and so how I read that is the fact that for me the barbell effect I, I see it as kind of like the T effect so if I was to try and, and help myself from an uncertain future I would make sure that I would be networked a lot more, that I would um, have a lot more people and different ideas coming at me all the time, be able to experience all sorts of different things simply because I cannot afford to just stay in my own little cloistered little profession because I'm going to be missing out on the, the bigger picture. So the barbell approach of his, I see it in my head as being more like a, uh, I guess a neo generalist in my uh, information, but also uh, being able and tapped into, I guess, don't stay in the middle, but all sorts of different activities and people and networks that could help me to stave off uh, potential impact in the future, whatever that could be. And again, you can't predict it. Loss of job maybe the weather turns and the house disappears and I need some help or whatever 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 it is I can't predict it really good book I enjoyed this uh, I would say that if you're someone <clears throat> if you're someone who hasn't read uh, tailored before it does a while to gets a while to get into it because there is just so much information in here and my review just doesn't do it justice really it barely scratches the surface because I'm still thinking about it and what he does is he's trying to he does doesn't give us the finality of things he doesn't say that this is it what he does is he opens a door for more conversations to happen and I had to laugh at this concept of these long walks that he would take with people he would mention this in this book and um, I love that I love this concept of being able to take a long slow rambling walk with someone who is I guess intellectually hopefully someone you know who can challenge your thinking and then come from it with um, more ideas I guess we just don't do it we don't do it often we certainly don't do it a lot in real life so yeah I really enjoyed that concept of his long rambling walks <laughs> so there you go that was the black swan by Nassim Nicholas Taleb so if you've read this book let me know what you think what book shall I read of his next <laughs>